In this video, we will learn how to program a dynamic array in Delphi code. I will demonstrate dynamic arrays with this project that you can create with me. But if you are new here, first go watch lesson 17.1 to 17.5 to get a better understanding of arrays. In the application we will create today, you must click this button to roll a die. You will be granted the number of wishes that you throw. After getting the number, you can make the wishes by clicking this button. Input boxes will pop up the same number of times that's on the die. After making your final wish, all your wishes must display in this wish list. We will use a dynamic array to store the wishes, because we don't know in advance how many wishes will be granted. Hi, it's Gerard here from Learn Delphi. I'm a trainer in programming languages and in this series, I help you to understand Delphi programming step by step and line by line. If this video is helpful to you, make sure you give it a thumbs up. And I also publish all the links I mention in this video in the description box below. In all our lessons, I start with the code immediately. I do not demonstrate how to create the graphical user interface. That is so that you only focus on the code of the lesson we are doing. If you want to follow what I'm doing, but you want to save some time, you can download the starter project to start immediately where I start with this lesson. This lesson will also make more sense if you first watch lesson 17.1 to 17.5. The starter and solution project files are available for download from my Patreon page at patreon.com slash learndelphi. I also posted that link in the description. And I'm using Delphi 10.3 Community Edition to demonstrate these lessons. There's also a link in the description if you want to download the free copy of Delphi. You can pause the video here and go do the downloads. <laughs> Here I have my project open in Delphi. If you have your project open, let's jump into it. Here's how it looks. Just another thing, if downloaded to start a project from Patreon, you will also find a folder called Dice. I added 6 pictures of Dice from number 1 to 6. The pictures are PNG files and their names are the numbers of the Dice. Our code must find a random picture and grant you the number of wishes according to the random number that you threw. We don't know in advance which number we will get, so we also cannot specify the number of elements in an array in advance. In arrays with fixed sizes, we add the number of elements between square brackets. But because we don't know how the die will fall, we cannot declare an array with a fixed size. We must first get a random number from 1 to 6. The random number must be accessible to both the buttons on this form, so we must declare it under the implementation clause. Double click this button. Go above the procedure header. Type var, press enter, type pte die number as byte. This byte variable will store the number that you threw. Go between the procedure header and the begin statement of the button's click event handler. Type const, enter and type this constant. str path is a constant and it will store the path to the dice folder and the first part of the picture's file name. We will get a random number and concatenate that to the file name. Go between begin and end. Type randomize. I did explain randomization in lesson 15.3. Press enter and type this statement. This statement gets a random number from 1 to 6 and assigns it to the byte variable we declared under the implementation clause. Press enter and type this statement. Here we get the random number that is now stored in BTE die number and convert it to a string and we also concatenate .png for the file extension and the path to the file that is stored in the constant. Then we pass it to the load from file method of the picture property of the image component named img dice. Make a new line. Type with pt take wishes do. Enter and type begin. Press enter. Type this statement. Here we change the caption of the button to display like this. Enter and type enabled colon equals true. Here we enable BT and take wishes. Make a new line under the end statement. Type BT enroll dot enabled colon equals false. 
Now we disable the first button. Run the program. Only one of the buttons are enabled by default. Click the top button. You must get a random picture of a die. Now this button is disabled and this one is enabled. It also shows me the number of the wishes granted to me. Now we must code this button to allow the user to make his wishes. Close the form. Click the design tab. Double click the second button. Go above begin. Type var. Enter and type arr wishes as array of string. Here we declare a string array, but it looks different than the arrays we declared before. In previous lessons we declared arrays with fixed sizes by typing the number of elements we require between square brackets. But here we don't specify a size. This is called a dynamic array. We declare dynamic arrays if we don't know in advance how many elements it must contain. When you cast a die you will get a random number. The number may be different every time, so it's impossible to know how many wishes must be stored in the array. With dynamic arrays, you can delay the sizing and resizing of an array until you know how many elements it must contain. In previous examples, we explicitly specified the lower and upper limits of an array. We often used one for the lower limit, but with a dynamic array the lower limit will always start at zero. So in this case, the first element you store in the array will be index zero and not index one. Press enter, type strwish as string. This variable will read each individual wish as we loop through the array. Enter again and type pte wish count as byte. This variable will be our counter variable for the loop. Go under begin, type lst wish list dot clear. Like always, we start with a blank list box every time the button is clicked. Enter and type btnroll.enabled colon equals true. Now we enable this button. Enter again and type btntakewishes.enabled colon equals false. We disable this button. At this point the number of wishes will be known to you, so you can now set the size of the array to the number that the user cast with the die. Make a new line. Type this statement. The set length procedure is used to size or resize a dynamic array. It has two or more input parameters. The first parameter accepts the name of the array you want to size. In the case of a single dimensional dynamic array, the second parameter is for the number of the elements. And in the case of a two dimensional dynamic array, you must pass an extra number for more dimensions. The name of our array is ARR wishes, and the number of elements it must contain will depend on the number of the die you cast. Now this is important. The number passed into the parameter sets the number of the elements. It does not set the index number that is the upper limit of the array. For example, if your number is 3, you will set the array element count to 3, but the elements will be indexed from 0 to 2, and not 1 to 3. Make a new line, type 4, pte wish count, colon equals, 1, 2, pte die number. Press enter and type begin. Enter again. We will first loop through the elements of the array like this. We start the loop with 1, and it must cycle the number of times stored in BTE die number. This loop will give us some issues, but let's first do it like this. We can come back later and fix the issues. Type this statement between begin and end. Here we show an input box to allow the user to make a wish. This parameter shows the wish number, and this parameter shows the input box's prompt, and this parameter shows the wish number as the default text. After the user submits a wish, the wish will be assigned to the first element of the array. And if the user has more than one wish, the loop will enter another time, and another input box will show the second wish, where after the second wish will be assigned to the second element of the array. 
The loop will continue cycling until all wishes are assigned to the elements of the array. Make a new line after the end statement. Type for str wish in arr wishes do. Press enter and type begin. Press enter again. Type this statement. Here we use a for in loop to loop through the elements of the array. With every cycle of the loop, the next individual element is found and the wish is added to the items of the list box. Run the program. Click the roll button. I can make four wishes. Now click the second button. An input box pops up and it shows the wish number in the title and in the text box of the input box. I will go ahead and make a few wishes. And my last wish, hamburger. After making the last wish, the list box displays my wish list. But this is not right. The first item in the list box is empty. And the genie ate my hamburger. The reason this happens is because the dynamic arrays index starts at zero, but the for loop starts counting from one. So we didn't assign a wish to index zero. That is why the first item in the wish list is blank. The hamburger I wished for is also not in the list because I only had 4 wishes. These 3 wishes plus the blank wish adds up to 4 wishes. Let's fix it. Close the form. Our loop is out of sync. It starts counting from 1, so the first wish is assigned to index 1 of the array and not index 0. Replace the 1 with a 0. To bring the whole loop in sync with the index numbers, we must also reduce the upper limit of the loop by 1. Type minus 1 after BTE die number. So if I now get 4 wishes, this loop will cycle from 0 to 3. In other words, it will cycle 4 times. Run the program again. Roll the die. I only got 1 wish, but I will take it. Now notice the title and the text box shows this wish is 0. That is also not right, but I will make the wish anyway. And this time it shows in the first line of the list box. Let's fix the wish number. Close the form. Because the loop now starts counting from zero, these two numbers will also be displayed as zeros in the output. We must also bring them in sync. Go behind the name of the byte variable and add plus one. Do the same here. Run the program. Roll the die. Now make your wishes. Now the wish number is correct in the input box. And the list box also works fine. If two wishes is not enough, roll the die again. Now I get three. I will make my three wishes. After making the three wishes, the list box clears the previous wishes and only the last three wishes are displayed. That was fun. Close the form and save your project. Next time we will look at more features of arrays. If you enjoyed this lesson, please leave a comment. And if you learned something new, please like, subscribe and share my lessons with your friends. Thank you for watching and a special thank you to my supporters on Patreon.com. And may all your wishes come true. And happy coding. See you next time.